In Dragon's Dogma 2, there's a variety of vocations that you can pick to play and freely switch between, but you will still want to pick the right one for you because investing time and defeating enemies in each of them will unlock new skills, core skills and augments for you to try out making you even more powerful. We've managed to play many of these ourselves now, so hopefully we can give an extra bit of understanding and knowledge to you guys on how to choose. Of course, you can switch vocations if you don't like the one you picked, and with so many options to choose from, we're going to go over each vocation to hopefully help you guys out on which one you want to play. Comment below which vocation you're thinking of picking now, and then see at the end of the video if you've changed your mind. If you don't know how the classes or vocations work in Dragon's Dogma 2, we've got you covered as well with a quick recap. Most classes will have a unique weapon allowing you to do a variety of attacks and some vocation specific mechanics like blocking, dodging and more. These core functions of your vocation such as your default attack string and your bumper skills are called core skills. This includes your basic attack combo which in some cases will have variations and other specific cool things to do with that vocation. Then you have weapon skills. Most classes will have access to four at a time and you're able to unlock more as you play your vocation and level it up, allowing access to even more powerful moves. These are things like casting spells as a mage, doing a massive swing with a greatsword as a warrior, or unleashing a volley of arrows as an archer. Finally, you have augments and this is where things get even more interesting. These are like traits or perks that you unlock as you progress the class and will give you access to a variety of different passive bonuses. These are things like giving you more health, stamina, increased carry weight, and even more. There's quite a range of these augments, and once you unlock them, they can be used on any other vocation, allowing for more in-depth customization of your build, and it can get pretty crazy if you invest the time in leveling the different vocations up. Your weapon skills, core skills, and augments are all unlocked by spending discipline points that you earn from slaying enemies, so farming enemies will be needed to unlock everything. Across all of the class vocations, you have Starter, Advanced, and Hybrid vocations. Starter vocations are the most simple option available to you at the start of the game. These are like starting classes, however each one plays dramatically differently with their own strengths and weaknesses, and they are capable of dealing with the majority if not all of the monsters in the game in the hands of a skilled player. These are available to your player character the Arisen and also your party member pawns. And then you have the advanced vocations. These are like a stronger alternative version of the starting vocations. They play differently and have access to new weapons and skills, making them entirely new playstyles in comparison to the starter vocations. These are also available to the player Arisen and also your party member pawns. But then there's hybrid vocations, a mixture of two other vocations in one, allowing for some extremely cool and new ways to play with unique magical powers and playstyles. These are exclusive to your player character arisen though. Some of these vocations will be unlocked through Meisters who have mastered their respective vocation and will teach them to you if you gain their approval. So let's kick things off with the starter vocations and then get into the advanced and hybrids. The fighter is a sword and shield specialist with strong defense and still good offensive capabilities. They excel in close range combat with a balanced approach, allowing them to both charge the enemy's line and run to the defense of allies. You can dish out damage with the swift slashes of your sword or deflect incoming blows with your shield. Pressing R1 will allow you to raise your shield and guard, and when you take hits while guarding you will lose stamina, however your stamina does regen but at a slower pace while holding guard down. You can also time your blocks to carefully deflect incoming blows as they're about to hit you, but be aware you can only guard and deflect in the direction you're facing, which will leave you vulnerable from behind. You can also use triangle to deal an especially powerful strike that if connected to an enemy that's knocked over, off balance or unaware, will deal even more damage. The fighter has some powerful augments increasing your health, making you more likely to be targeted, increasing your carry weight and much more. The archer is a master of the bow, using long ranged attacks with their bow and arrow. You can be very precise with your hits while also staying at a safe distance to your enemies, which will then create openings for your allies to exploit. As you master the archer, you'll be able to use special arrows that can inflict dehabilitations on enemies. You can loose arrows quite rapidly at nearby enemies by just pressing square without having to aim. This does however deal reduced damage and have a reduced range, but you can hold R1 to use steady aim to allow you to aim your arrows with more deadly precision, dealing massive damage to enemy weak points and with greater accuracy. The archer has augments that allow for quicker climbing, increased damage against the target's vitals, more stamina and a buff to your lantern to reduce the amount of oil it uses 
loses and increases its illumination area. The Thief is a master of speed and efficiency wielding double daggers. You can unleash a flurry of blows in one moment and then dodge out of an enemy's reach in another. This class is for people who are good at knowing when to strike and when to slip away. Their speed and damage is their advantage, but because of this they don't wear heavy armor, which does leave them somewhat vulnerable if you get hit. Your R1 skill allows you to use Swift Step. This is a quick maneuver to evade enemy attacks as well as gap close and escape. With your triangle attacks though, you can do twin fangs. Using this on a knocked down or off balance enemy will give you an opportunity to repeatedly press the attack to follow up with even more attacks and deal massive damage, but beware, you cannot move while doing this. Grabbing an enemy while activating twin fangs allows you to cling to larger targets with each strike, and doing this will give you access to a variety of skills while still clinging, making the thief great for climbing all over monsters. Although we haven't seen it in action, you can also steal items from NPCs and enemies with the thief, making this a very unique mechanic of the vocation. Their augments include increased strength, a decrease in the likelihood of being targeted, healing some health when defeating enemies, and more. The mage commands a variety of magic and learns even more powerful spells as you master them. They use a staff and are vital to any party, with their ability to not only rain down magical attacks to exploit enemy weaknesses, but also their use of curative magic and empowering enchantments to buff allies. Using Triangle, you will encant Anodyne. This will conjure a curative sigil that will heal allies and yourself so you can keep on fighting. Casting spells does take time to encant though, and the stronger the spell, the longer the time it takes to cast, leaving you vulnerable. You can use your right analog stick to center your camera on foes, which allows you to change targets, and encanting a spell while a fellow caster is encanting the same spell will allow you to link together and cast it even faster, so you can get those devastating spells out even quicker. Their augments include faster stamina regeneration, higher magic defense, increased healing, and more. And then we have the advanced vocations, including the warrior, a ferocious melee damage dealer that is best when fighting in the vanguard. The warrior wields powerful two-handed weapons like a greatsword and hammer, and you can execute large powerful swings and headlong charges. If you like the idea of slower but more heavy hitting, wide cleaving, devastating attacks, then you will love the warrior. You can even hold down the square button to unleash a powerful charge swing for even greater damage, and while charging you have increased resistances and are less likely to be flinched. With your R1 button you can do a barge which is great to follow up after large greatsword attacks, as it reduces your chance to flinch and increases your resistances, giving you plenty of time to counter enemy attacks and go into another slash. You can also do follow-up attacks on downed, off-balanced, or unaware enemies with Triangle, which will have you dealing some very powerful strikes. So if you love big meaty chops with two-handed weapons, the Warrior will be your go-to. The Sorcerer is all about encanting a wide range of powerful offensive spells. By using the powerful Arch Staff, they deal great damage over wide areas and dehabilitate enemies with their magic. As with the Mage, your encanting does take time, so your positioning and timing is important to get those massive damaging spells off. With many devastating spells, the Sorcerer is a master of spectacular magic and destruction. You can use Triangle to do Galvanize, which allows you to rapidly regenerate your stamina, which is required to cast spells. So you have a built-in mechanic that allows you to consistently top up your stamina to keep on casting deadly spells so long as you can remain safe in the battle. It's great to know that you can move while encanting a spell, but this does increase the time it takes to cast, so keeping as still as possible while spellcasting will improve your damage output. Much like the mage, you can turn your camera to target different enemies, and casting near a fellow caster encanting the same spell will also speed up the incant duration. And then we have the hybrid classes that only your player character the Arisen can use. The Magic Archer is a returning vocation from the first game, one that I particularly loved, and this combines together the power of magic and the long-ranged combat of an archer. You wield a unique magic bow that can both deal damage at range with a variety of multi-hitting magical arrows that will lock onto enemies and their weak points, but you can also use skills to heal allies, revive them, and more. You're purely ranged focus, so you are at a disadvantage at close range, but your range of unique magical arrows and attacks more than make up for it. You can use R1 to aim onto your targets, allowing your arrows to pinpoint on specific areas of larger monsters or target multiple smaller enemies at once. You can also quick fire with square to shoot a trio of short ranged arrows. Using triangle allows you to switch and toggle between the pinpoint volley, which allows you to target multiple enemies over a wide area, or rivet shot, which will allow you to narrow your targeting area so you can focus on enemies with more accuracy to certain weak points. The mystic spear hand is a combination of the strength of a fight 
fighter and the magic of mages. With their unique duo spear weapon, you can fight effectively at close range, but also fight at range with a variety of magical skills and abilities. You can halt enemies in place with a burst of magic, teleport and unleash devastating rapid strikes on enemies, but with no means to evade or defend, your best defense will be to keep a strong offense. You can use R1 to shoot a magic redoubted bolt or charge this, which will then halt enemies in their tracks, slowing them down. This gives you an opening if you time it well to teleport to them and deal a critical strike. This means you can control your enemies a bit easier, use magic and melee, making the Mystic Spearhand a real force to be reckoned with if you can position well due to the lack of evasion and blocks. The Trickster is a unique vocation that favours control, buffs and illusions instead of dealing direct damage. You wield the unique weapon called a Sensor that will build up smoke that draws enemy attention towards you. This may seem bad at first because you have little to offer in terms of direct offence. However, you can conjure Simulacrums with Triangle and move it around with R1. This illusion will draw the attention away from you and any aggro you've built, so you can control where enemies will be focusing and attacking, giving you great control over the battle field. With this you can trick enemies to jump off of cliffs, group together for a more powerful spell to hit them, and more. You can even possess an enemy by holding down R1 and pressing triangle to cast an enthralling aroma that causes enemies to be possessed, which is a great tactic to do when outnumbered because this will cause enemies to turn on the possessed target. The true power of the trickster lies in the buffs it provides to its allies, causing them to deal massive damage and be unkillable while buffed. This allows you to control enemies while they dish out the damage. With a multitude of illusions and ways to trick or control the battlefield, the trickster is a very fun class. The Warfarer, however, is a master of all weapons, and this unique vocation can use a variety of weapons and skills from the other vocations and then switch freely between them in combat, allowing for some amazing situational strength and flashy moves at the cost of having lower overall stats. This vocation is for someone who has mastered the other weapons and the skills of the other vocations and wants to take the game to the next level, even at the cost of overall lower stats and strength. The strength of the Warfarer lies in using the abilities of all of the different weapons to complement the situation at hand. You can use a staff to cast a powerful magic spell, which then gives you an opening to switch into the Duo Spear to get close and personal. The Warfarer can respond to any situation with ease when controlled by a skilled player. So which vocation do you plan to play first and did you change your mind since the start of the video? Tell us in the comments down below and subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2 coming your way very soon.